So I hear data analytics is getting to be a big thing for business students. Yeah, data analytics is pretty big. I understand there are a lot of different technologies involved, right? Yes, but you can get into it quickly using a variety of technologies. Well, what are those? Well, to do data analytics, you have to know SQL, because that's where the, all the data is stored. It's important because in order to analyze data, you have to be able to access it. That sounds cool. What would another technology be? Some others learn something like R, but I think Python is huge for business because of the extensive libraries. So you think Python is as important as SQL? Definitely. They don't do the same thing, but they cover dis different aspects of analytics. What different aspects do they cover? Well, SQL is about retrieving and getting specific data, while Python allows you to do deep analysis. So what kind of analysis are you talking about? Well, people can start with descriptive statistics and then move to more advanced techniques to gain insight. Eventually, some people also use machine learning and data mining to examine data in the most extensive manners. So what is this module about? Well, the hardest thing to do is to get data that business students can analyze. We'll show you a few examples of retrieving the prices of option chains for Ford Motor Company. Options trade throughout the day on different exchanges, and in fact, the price has changed by fractions of a second. We're going to show you how to retrieve option chain data every minute in an automated way. Awesome! So what's an option? Great question. The first two basic types of options are called calls and puts. Calls and puts? Yeah, a call option. Often simply labeled a call. It's a contract between the buyer and the seller of the call option to exchange a security at a set price. Okay. Basically, the buyer of the call option has the right to buy a certain number of the stocks from the seller of the option at the expiration date for the strike price. Okay. The seller must sell the stock if the buyer wants to. The buyer pays a fee for this right. The term call comes from the fact that the owner has the right to call the stock away from the seller. Okay, then what is a put option? A put option is like the opposite of a call. The buyer has the option to buy the stock at a later given price. Really, if you think about, if you think the price is going to go down a lot, then buy a lot of put options. Okay, but why not just sell the stock short? Great question, and it has to do with leverage. An investor can control a great, far greater number of shares with an option than by simply buying the stocks themselves. Some people make a tremendous amount of money by purchasing a call or put option, and if the market moves a lot in one direction, then because of leverage, they can make many times the initial investment. So then what is an auction chain? An option chain is a listing of all available option contracts for a given security. It shows all the listed puts, calls, their expiration, strike prices, volume, and pricing information for a single underlying asset within a given maturity period. Oh wow, that sounds like it could be a lot of data. Yeah, it's easy to get to 20,000 rows of data every week on a put and call options. That is so awesome. But one question, why are we choosing to get option data on Ford Motor Company compared to any other stock that is publicly traded? Because I think Ford Mustangs are way cool. So, to review, an option chain is a listing of all available options contracts for a given security. In our case, Ford Motor Company. An options chain shows all listed puts, calls, their expiration, strike prices, and volume and pricing information for a single underlying asset within a given maturity period. The chain will typically be categorized by expiration date and segmented by calls versus puts. An options chain provides detailed quote and price information and should not be confused with an option series or cycle that instead simply denotes the available strike prices or expiration dates. Here is the Ford option chain and the associated prices from Yahoo Finance. We see the name of the company and the ticker symbol as well as several different contracts and the prices for each contract. And here is a specific contract and the price in the time. Here it says F for Ford and it is February 5th expiring contract of 2021. It is a call option, and this contract is for $5.50. The stock was trading for $11.37 at this moment. 
The strike price for the option is $5.50, and the last price this option traded for was $6.20. The current bid price is $5.80, and the current asking price is $5.95. Then we have columns representing the change in the price, the percent change, the volume of options contracts traded, and the open interest. The last column is implied volatility. Open interest indicates the total number of option contracts that are currently out there. Implied volatility represents the expected volatility of a stock over the life of the option. As expectations rise, or as the demand for an option increases, implied volatility will rise. Options that have high levels of implied volatility will result in high-priced option premiums and implied volatility. Oftentimes, an option that is trading far away from the underlying stock price will have a large volatility. In this case, the implied volatility is 387.5%, which is obviously very high. Here is the Python code that retrieves the option chains for Ford. We used the Yahoo Finance Library and imported options. We then retrieved the expiration dates for Ford Motor Company. We then can look at different dates for which Ford call options are expiring. Here is the code and the option chain that is retrieved. Interestingly, if you run the code every minute, the trading price is continually changing because options are continually being traded throughout the trading day. Here is the Ford option chain for put options. It obviously looks very similar to calls, except that it is a chain for put options. To reiterate, the four columns of information that traders focus on to assess current market conditions are last price, net change, bid, and ask. The last price column displays the latest trade price captured and reported. Information in the net change column reflects the direction up, down, or flat for the underlying asset as well as the, the amount of price variance from the previous trade. Review of the bid column shows information about how much a trader should expect to receive on the sale of that option at the time frame. Information about how much the trader can expect to pay to purchase that option at that time appears in the Ask column.